Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another poetry meeting. This time in Dolaron. We have quite a turn up. Well, not as strong as last time. Still should be exciting. I saw Cora with my eye. I see Bertel and Hardy. As always, Targwin, Hatir, Rosie. Oh, so many lovely faces. And I'm quite excited to see what they have brought to us today. <laughs> and I hope it will be something lovely. As it always is, though. There's no doubt in my mind that it will be delightful. I will see you in a moment when Bertel announces the beginning of the event. Welcome to the 143rd meeting ever installment in the Laran Poetry Appreciation Society. We thank you for the welcome, Bertel. Today is the 12th of May. So we could maybe expect a little bit of a love themed as the May as the month of May is in Czech culture considered the love month. As usual I will open the meeting with reciting a poem and then people who got their name on the sign up list may take turns according to the list. If you didn't get your name on the list, then you will have a chance after the people on the list had their return, if there is time left. We should have invited not Jordan, so that we would have infinite time. <laughs> And as tradition is, the meeting will conclude with a small firework display. <coughs> oh shit, 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 shit. Boop. Boop. I am so fucking good. <laughs> The first poem of this meeting will be from someone who frequently contributes. Orient Star? Ah, Orient Quest. I was fucking close. <laughs> oh, yes, one will be morbid, very likely. He sent me a poem titled, Vilified. <clears throat> but he added a note that he didn't actually write a poem he sent me. Doesn't say who then did. Anyway, <coughs> really hard. I am but a shadow that rests on a home. I have heard pleading objections to my heart of stone. I once knew of love, of light 
and hope. Then found the place where all good things go to die. For every burden, there is someone to bear it. Behind the greater good, there is sins we commit. Your fragile words need the source of blame to ascribe. But there are evils that can be described. Under Imperium were all his children, who wouldn't gladly die for the sake of their kin. It takes a pure soul to cling tight to faith as they die. But to kill for him is something only the strong abide. And that's something no child should have be put through. I cross the line for your sake, so you don't have to. But if that child shall ever ever even think to stray from that the path, they will know no mercy. They will be purged from an, with unhesitant wrath. The death of innocence is but necessity. If you abhor that hold, you are welcome to your fantasy. As those beside me bear witness to the darkness of life, then for the greater good I stand beside them and called to die. All of the ends I prevent it must always be the one you vilify. If you had seen, if you had seen what I had seen, you would be devast devastated. You would be terrified. No hope for my redemption, gifted here by the hands of a better man. Know that my blood-stained palms have only ever cared for a greater plan. Ooh, more with as I expected. <laughs> so, the first poet on this improvised, improvised stage for tonight will be Kalido. Let me just fish up the tea bag. Because it's already soaked with water. As it all should be. <laughs> one minute scanner, one minute. This is for a special lady in my life, my daughter. Ichigo. Ichigo! Ichig. Oh. By Kalidor Night Fury. I have this little friend of mine. She's really quite endearing. She gobbles candy all day long and nearly hits the ceiling. She loves the color pictures of yellow, blue and red. But her favorite thing, favorite, favorite best thing to do is cuddling, she said. She loves to make new friends and hear all of their stories. She smiles sweetly when she asks to cuddle all the Hoodies. When she is grown up, she is going to be 
powerful and amazing, I know. Until then, I will cuddle her all day long, my darling Ichigo. Love you, sweet pea. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> Time of death, 2021. 20, or in a 12 hour system, 8 hours and 21 minutes p.m. Time, murderer, Kaora. Large and fast poems. Good evening, all, all of you wonderful people. Sadly, I cannot yet play an instrument, so this song will go un unaccompanied. Yeah, big word. <laughs> Above the bright and bustling town, sought and called by many a sail. Stood the cliffs that overlooked the sea, where the white birds would woefully wail. Up on that cliff, the two had met, and had sworn an oath of love. Yet her father said to her one day, Love alone was not enough. If your hand he wants, then let him let him come. Let him hear what he is to do. Let, no, let, him, let him hear what he is to do. And until he pays the price I charge, he will not he will see not a sight of you. So he locked his daughter, raven haired, away from her daring swain. And said to him, You will work my lands till my barns are filled with grain. The youth was reticent and strong. He toiled, toiled day in and day out, the craggy soil and of salt and stone, where no crops would want to sprout. From her window, every night she sang words of rain and gentle breeze. And by summer's end, the crops stood tall, and her heart was thin at ease. Yet before their wedding was to be, came the word of nearing war. And the bright salesman, both young and old, to the distant battles bore. From the cliff she looked over the sea, where her one true love had gone. And the white birds wailed for days on end, and the bright sails she saw none. Then came the news like winter's chill, that their soldiers met defeat, that the ships with death and wounded were, all burned down by the enemy fleet. Alone she stood and cried for her hill, and the white birds cried alone. And that was when it came to her, she too could sing their song. Her bridal veil was of salty spray, sea foam was her wedding crown, and one more white bird flew that day by the now quiet fishing town. Wow! 
Cola. That was one morbid song. But this was cute and nice. Thank you very much. Yes! <laughs> Another fast and furious firing, world sputtering man, Harvey Lester. Welcome to the stage, mate. Let's see what you got today. Evening all. A little poem about some of my favorite things in life. Sipping coffee in my chair. Trying to write news, I swear. But the words won't come out right. Maybe I need another bite. My pen is scratching on the page as I try to fill it with news and sage. But my mind is wandering away to the aroma of coffee. Come with me. The words are all jumbled in my head as I take another sip, half in dread. <clears throat> Half in dread. Will I ever finish this piece? Or will my copy addiction never cease? But then the caffeine hits my brain. And I feel like I'm on a new strain. <laughs> my writing flows like, like, like a river. All thanks to my copy giver. So, so here is to the bean that helps me write, and to the news that keeps me up at night. I may be a journalist, young and green, but with my copy, I'm a news machine. <laughs> That's a good one, Hardy. I even could up, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is, it is still a long time since we have seen him. The magnificent Tag Demon. <laughs> Tagwin, welcome to the show once more. Evening, all. While back, I came from. Uh, I came here on poetry meeting. And I was inspired by, by a lady I met. I would like. Back then, I dedicate my poem to Rosie, my fiance. <coughs> the dream girl. I stand in soft warm spring rain and I'm waiting for you. When you came to me, we will walk together under the ties blooming trees. I will hold you from hand and you will gently stroke my hand with your soft thumb. When you came to me, we will have a peaceful rest by the little lake, just under that old tree. I will lie next to you as you sit, your back just 
three against three my head resting in your lap when you come to me you will sit next to me and sing with your soft voice slowly luring me into sleep I stand in soft warm spring rain I'm and I'm waiting for you my dream girl my rosy it was a nice uh, work part even if, if it had a lot of chromatic arrows <laughs> but really lovely nice work Tarquin I think that's sexy oh my oh my oh my what a piece of art it is Vivian's turn Vivian is an absolute angel when it comes to gorgeous art of work. It seems Didi will be her translator. So we will see Vivian in action. There is a Drenar with a portion. She has a shop de dedicated to fashion. But last night criminals took stuff. So we've treated them rough. <laughs> Biff chased them out of the shops and kicked one of one in the bits and bobs. <laughs> <laughs> they took a lot but won't return. Cause Biff will get them feel the burn. And I remember next time trucks come to my home. Whiff will probably not be alone. <laughs> Whiff is a fucking badass. And we love her. Good job, Vivian. Good job. <laughs> oh my fucking god, that's genius! Next up on the improvised stage is Hottie Ravenai. My ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some uh, magnificent work of art. Hottie, the famous music news of all. <laughs> I'm quite curious if she brought once again a, a musical artwork. This piece I have titled Burden of Age. Years pass by as if they were days. Life's fleeting moments slip through like sun rays. Our, wo our world changes. It grows, withers, hills and breaks. The surface changes. Mountains crumble. Craters forming lakes. And some races age quickly. Going from young to old. They don't live an ancient life, but oh. They are bold, building cities here and there, tall, wide, all with flair. Making a mark on the world for generations to see, and one of the grandest around would be And as the stones pile up to build up build the walls, there are instead those who dig and make holes. 
all traces with all their marks. Dwarven and stonework and no more sparks. But with greater age also comes memory. A lot of things can happen in a century. It is not all sunrise and cheer. All world changes each and every year. And with this long life trait, <coughs> we, we are also granted a large weight. Many things I wish I could forget. And for even more, I have a regret. A struggle for my kin and I. And I would imagine for the deny. A broken world and a home turned to ash. A wound fresher than any other gash. Soot keeps falling from the sky, as clear it could be in mind's eye. In my mind's eye, a smile is easy to hold, but the weight of the past is persistent. I'm sure all horned friends would agree, no matter how distant, lost in thought heart in denial, and here you stand, still saying, exile, I wouldn't blame you if not, years fracture the mind, and it is getting harder for some peace to be behind, not everyone can handle the stress, and when they snap, it really is a mess, and as, and as sad as it sounds, it turn, turns some of my kin to clowns, Jealous of the younger races, I'm sure you have seen the cases. The ancients who act like a teen, who will no doubt call me mean. I do not agree with their choices, but still I understand. I too am jealous, a long life is not always so grand. So you who are worried your age is at the brink. Take a deep breath. You are most blessed, more blessed than you think. Yep. Thank you very much, Hatir. It was delightful. I don't remember the voice that I used for her, so you will have to forgive me, but she won't have the same one. <laughs> Hello again! This next one is a bit on the other end, a bit more chipper. It is all about balance after all. I have titled it to each and every one of them. Woo. To all the squirrels I loved before. You are still loved. I never thought you were born. Even as you steal my nuts from your winter store. For your winter store. I do not get mad for you, I simply get more to all squirrels who shared my life. Though through thick and thin, through joy and strife. Even as a young elf, when I was practicing the, uh, the five, to all squirrels who cared for me. And I was lonely, staring out at sea, as I left civilization, inten intending to flee. You would always help and return me to plea. To all the squirrels I once caressed, with a silver fur that could only be blessed, or at the coat for a winter you were dressed, a simple touch to ease a mind that is stressed. 
to all squirrels through time and space. Somehow, you don't remain the lovable, lovable race, jumping from twig to branch with grace. Even so distant, my heart has made you pla a place. To all the squirrels I loved despite their scars, do not doubt you still belong with the stars. And the road forward is not mine, it is ours. To all squirrels I set, I set sail to sea, making their home in an exotic tree, sharing their yard with some buzzing bee, doing what they do, living oh so carefree. To all squirrels I loved and lost, regardless if it was to age or frost. Or if you protected your home with a cost. To all squirrels hidden till now, <coughs> proudly sitting on their secret bow. Masters of sneaking critters with high brow. I found you at last and gave you a bow to all squirrels burrowed beneath, adapting with ever so sharp teeth, making their home in an unlikely heath. To all squirrels I have yet to meet, I am determined to bring you a treat, regardless if nuts, seeds or even a beet. Even if you shy away, the sight will be sweet. And finally, to all squirrels I may never find. Either because of my scattered mind, or maybe age will make me blind. Even if I may never learn your name, to me you are beloved, you are loved all the same. <laughs> A wonderful poem, thank you very much. Another tiny poet is on the stage. Quite possibly it could be the last one, but I'm doubtful. I expect at least two more. Greetings everyone, I hate that my poem will be sound the mood a bit, but tonight I lay bare a part of my soul. Child of the world, world tree burning, tell it still. A hollow husk of countless lives lost to the flames of darkness and insanity, sneaking silently, the sudden cold. The sunless citizens the starless starlight city it is a cautionary tale a warning about the power of words and the fear of the unknown as a sin You see, a sinner like me cannot comprehend this. The fear behind those eyes, behind the flames, The 
crushing jaws, the crushing moss that leaves my mind in darkness. No tunnels, just flames. Just endless expanse of void calling me back. Child of nothingness, I end where I begin, for I believe not in your light. The stories inside are all that remain, like immortal tes testimony. To a life that has outlived so many. So why am I more worthy than they? Why do I live when their, their world burns? We too, gnomes, have lost our home, but they can never reclaim it. And I live on red blood under my unworthy hands. <laughs> that all the ocean's blue could never hope to wash away. And as my hair grays, and as I think back to the white snow and the green grass of my home, my sighs darken. And my minute stature diminishes once more, it seems. You know, when I pray for those gone, I pray for friends, as I do for enemy, enemies. But when all is said, when all is done at last, who will be left to pray for me? That's a dark one. Thank you very much. Post lovely. <laughs> Give it up one more time, Paul Hardy. I might I go ahead and some um, voice, but I doubt that. Quite a lot to follow up. Uh, I'll shall try. Of all the things that I could be. A silly little poem is me. A rhyme, a giggle, a skip and a play, and brighten up your dreary day, day, day. I talk of magic, fun of ch and cheer, of dragons, rainbows far and near. I make you laugh, I make you smile, <coughs> and take you on a silly while. So if you are feeling down and blue, just read like my lines. It will comfort you, for in this world of grown-up strife, a silly poem can bring new life. Whew! Mr. Speedster again. <laughs> Just... Oh, tears! Oh! Oh! Okay! <laughs>